Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be rebuilding Handelect. It won the community poll quite convincingly to be fair. The way we decide the rebuild is always by doing a community vote, so be sure to get involved in the next one. To rebuild Handelect, we are going to be using a very overpowered 442 diamond tactic. So it's going to be different to the traditional 442. It worked really, really well. Again, full credit goes to the creator of the tactic, which is going to be linked in the description. But let's get into this rebuild and see what we can do with Andalect within four to five seasons. So this is going to be Andalect and to start with, the goal is to make them the most dominant team in Belgium convincingly. Again, at the moment, they're not enjoying their best season in real life. We'd like to try. The goal is to try and make them win the title at least three times within five seasons and see how far we can push this team in terms of European success as well. We are going to be having that sort of difficult situation of where we're going to be playing Champions League a lot. Um, whereas, you know, the Europa League might be quite achievable with this side. A Champions League, I don't even know if we're going to get there. But we'll see what we can do. We have got four to five seasons. When you start off with Anderlecht, um, to be honest, the actual facilities, the youth facilities, the youth recruitment is all good. Again, as the last few rebuilds have been, we haven't got a lot of money to start. We only got given around £2 million. So you can't really sign too many players with that. So we are just going to use the first 11 for the first season. And then we can get a rough sort of idea exactly what, what we're working with and where we can improve. But as you can see, the media prediction is actually fifth. I think we can improve on that. I think we might not win at the first season, but definitely we should be coming inside of the top three. There's no reason why we can't. But as I said, unfortunately for us, we have, I don't know what happened there. We've only been given two million pounds. So you can't really do too much with that at all. So we're not even going to try because I don't really want to loan in more players. There are quite a few loan players in this side already. One being the man on the thumbnail, Fabio Silva. If we take a little look at this, we can see exactly how this does line up. Um, by the way, anyone in the comments right now, if you don't mind, sometimes on this screen here, I'm still getting used to this screen. Um, some of the players don't appear on here. Could anyone explain why? Like, for example, this position here says no one can play there. I've got like three people that can. So if anyone knows why, please do let me know. But we're going to have a little look at this because we have got some decent players. But obviously, there are also a lot of red flags in this team. To start with, the goalkeeper is OK for the first couple of seasons. Three and a half star ability is actually more than OK for this division. When it comes to the fullbacks, especially the left back, Jan Vertonghen is not an option in my eyes. He's going to get absolutely dominated as a fullback but he might end up having to play there as rotation because according to this we only have one other fullback that can play there which is going to be in the die we then go to the center backs we've got how is it i think that's how you say that how i think that's how you say that again a very very good center half but tongan's okay at center back he'll do for a season um also got del del croy so you say that do apologize if i'm butchering any of these names um and at right back we've got options not the best quality but three right backs we've got marilo sadaki and sardella who you know they're not the best but they would do a job we then go over to the midfield we've got treble Dawara, and Kana. so a decent sort of midfield area on the right hand side we've got relov um sadiki and al I'm not even going to try and say that because I will butcher it. We, we then go to the sort of attacker midfielder. And again, we've got some decent players, but not, not amazing players. Like, I mean, I have got to remember we are in the Belgian league and Anderlecht, although they're not the favourites at the moment, I believe three star and above for this division is more than enough. I think that'll push them into probably one of the best, better players in the division. And up top, we are blessed with options, to be fair. We've got Fabio Silva, who is on loan. Depending on how he does, we are going to do everything we can to try and keep him. But obviously, if he has a good season, he's going to be looking at 30 to 40, possibly 50 million. And clubs like this, you just don't get that type of funding. We've got um, Raman, who again is quite a good striker. And also... Ep Pasito, who again is a player who I believe is on loan and a player that I would like to keep because I'm quite a big fan of him as well. I've used him previously. I forgot who it was with now. I think that possibly wasn't with my Watford rebuild, was it? I've used him before anyway, and he was really good. It could have been the last FM, and I really did enjoy using him despite his two and a half star. He can grow into quite a good player. But this is the main man of the team. This is the guy who obviously we do want to try and get get him playing because even if we've got him for a season we may as well get the most out of him um he looks really good guys he looks really good obviously never really done it at wolves to the to the level which people thought obviously quite a lot of money for wolves 
but he's valued at 28 to 42 million. Now that might even be too much if we got him for the lower end of the scale, but we have got him for a season. We're going to try and get the best out of him because, you know, he's by far our best player going forward. And this is going to be how the team looks. So this is going to be the sort of diamond. Now, although it's like sort of... The reason why I say it's like a, a narrow on, on the thumbnail mainly is because these wingers do come in a lot. So it does sort of like, it does shape up as a narrow 4-4-2. They're not out wide all the time. So as you can see here, this is going to be sort of the four in midfield. This is your 4-4-2. Now some would call it a 4-1-2-1-2, but in my opinion and how it's described is a 4-4-2 wide diamond. So it does sort of come in and form a sort of centralized formation and it works really well. So this is going to be the start on 11. I've read out all of the names before. Again, I can't really make it. I can't really do any signings. The past few rebuilds we've done have been with teams either of small stature or have not got the best finances. So if we were to rebuild Manchester United, which has been requested several times, so that will be in the community vote next week, um, then we are going to be making some signings in the first window. But let's get into the first season and see how this team performs. So it actually performed really well, guys. We managed to win the league, obviously. Quite convincingly as well. I say I'd say that's quite convincingly. Scoring 125 goals and conceding 49. So if you're going to try and improve based off that, you would say we're fine going forwards. A little bit weak at the back. Obviously, ninth best when we won the league is a little bit out of out of place. But we've got to take into account that a lot of our attackers probably were on loan. So we might have to reinvest in the attack more than the defense, as much as that might not make sense to a lot of you. But it is going to be Esposito coming in with 53 goals. So actually outperforming Fabio Silva. And it's going to be the Sarin, the Scarin, I believe how you say that, coming in with 29 assists. But some of the key stats coming out of it then, as you can see here, this is where things get worrying because both of our strikers, 53 goals, 40 goals for Silva, 21 assists. I mean, the endless goals in this tactic, it really is. But both of our striker options are on loan now this is a big worry because we're not going to be able to sign both of them um if anything we're not even going to be able to touch fabio silva because i imagine his value is going to skyrocket so i'm going to see what we can do um don't even know how much money we've got yet but hopefully we can keep one of them i think both of them is going to be a big stretch to try and do but we have got other um, contributions in goal scorers we've got 19 here 13 sorry here 11 here 8 8 7 so there are goals pretty much all throughout the team. Even down here, you've got a couple of, or quite a few fives actually, then threes, twos. Contributions with assists is pretty much spread around 29 here. Very good stat line. And Amazu coming in with 22. So to be fair, everyone is sort of chipping in. But let's be real. There are two key performers when it comes to getting goals. And both of them are on loan. And we have only been given a budget of 18 and a half million. Now, this is the one issue with doing rebuilds um, with teams in sort of, I don't want to slate the leagues, but not the top five leagues in the world. Let's just say that because you only can get to a certain point unless you get taken over and they start pumping money in, et cetera, et cetera. It takes way more than four to five seasons to start getting them big budgets. And also it's hard to attract some of the, the key signings that you'd want to sign in a in another sort of save that you've got going. So to attract people to this league can be difficult, um, as anyone that plays FM will know. But we're going to do our best with this money and see exactly if we can try and somehow keep Fabio Silva or Esposito and see who else we can get to strengthen this team. So I'll come back to you with Season 2 of the transfers. Well, guys, this is going to be Season 2 of the transfers, and unfortunately... We couldn't get Fabio Silva, and I'm going to tell you now the reason why. The reason why we couldn't get him is because they wanted 89 million up front and 42 million in instalments, and that is simply one as a ripoff, and two, we cannot do that with any means at all, nowhere near, and they would not budge at all. But luckily, we did get a little bit of a bargain, I personally think, on Esposito, who actually was the top goal scorer. So at least we managed to keep one of them from Inter Milan for 7 million. We also offloaded Treble to Lens for 4.7 million. There is another page, so don't worry. We also got rid of Jan Vertonghen to Cadiz because he is just getting old, 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 elderly, whatever you want to say. And also Zeno de Bass to Milan for 5.5 million up front, 10 million overall. And to do that, with the money we got, we also managed to bring in Jamie Bion Gettins from Dortmund for 16.7 million. Now, I'm going to be honest, it's the first time I've signed him, but 
as I mentioned before, I can't sign the usual people I usually go for because they're not interested in coming to the Belgian league. So you, it's quite fun doing rebuilds in different leagues because you get used to going for different players, different targets. You have to learn a little bit more about, you know, certain players, the people that come, people that won't come. So this guy is from Dortmund, so a big club, but obviously not one of the real, real big names in my opinion. We then also go over and we sign Erikovic, for six million after installments and these are going to be the players then so esposito um i don't really need to talk too much about him as you can see here a fantastic goal scoring record 38 appearances 35 goals um quite good to be fair in the sense he can play attacker midfielder he can play as a striker attributes are quite good again he's not the quickest but he has got a good goal to game ratio um nearly a goal a game and that is more than enough for this division as you can see here he could improve to a four star which would be absolutely ideal we then go and we sign this player here and the reason why i got him is because he, first off i know his finishing's not great but he's rapid on the ball he's quick good dribbling good technique he's only 18 um already a three and a half star and he could improve a lot he can play on both wings more comfortable on the left hand side and i think this guy will be very difficult to defend against and especially in this division i feel like he's going to absolutely mock the defenders and it should be Quite an easy division for him to adapt and grow in. So that's exactly why we went for this man. The last player is going to be a centre half who can also play right back. And the reason why I got him is obviously to replace Vertonghen. And in my opinion, he's going to be a very good signing. Um, ideally, he would be playing at centre back because obviously Vertonghen has gone. So I'd like to replace him. I don't know where the, the assistant manager is going to put him. Then obviously we do simulate these seasons. Um, he could put him at fullback because he's a four-star fullback and also a four-star centre-back. But in terms of stars, attributes, whatever you want to say, he is fairly solid. Four-star right off the rip and also could improve slightly. So it definitely is a good signer for the team. And this is going to be how the lineup is now. And as you can see, we are seeing... Well, the play is pretty much going right in. Esposito, I'm not going to say he's a new one because we had him on loan. But we're going to have it's pretty much the same start on 11. But we are also going to have Erikovic come in. We're going to have Gittens come in. Esposito, obviously. Ramon does replace Silva up front because, obviously, we couldn't get him back. Um, We've got 8 El Haddad coming in at the central attacking midfield role. We've got Dewara, who's pretty much going to dominate that deep line playmaker role unless we do bring anyone in. Um, but for overall, I look at that team now and it is quite a decent side, especially for this division. Is it good enough to, you know, champions the contenders? No, nowhere near. But hopefully we should have no issue now. Um, the only worry I've got is obviously we are losing a lot of goals from Fabio Silva. But we're going to get into the second season and hopefully go back to back as Belgian champions. So the person that said we couldn't compete for the Champions League was wrong. Me. <laughs> because although we didn't get to the final, even get to the final, we did get to the semi-final, which in my opinion is way beyond what I thought we'd actually do. Um, I didn't think we'd, you know, possibly we'd get out of the groups. But to get to the semi-final, and obviously Real Madrid is a ridiculous task, um ridiculous task indeed so we're not going to complain about that at all it's still a fantastic accomplishment we also won the belgian league also the belgian super cup and a little bit disappointing in the belgian cup but that was against club Bruges, a team which we could lose against if there was going to be one in the belgian cup we did however score 115 goals it is going to be esposito getting 47 of those and only conceded 34 so we've also sort of well, solid it up at the back quite a lot to be honest um so to be fair Overall, this season is a massive improvement because we've added Champions League to the list that we've got to do. And we've got all the way through the groups. We've got to the semi-final, obviously matched up against a giant who have got some ridiculous players. Probably one of their players in Vincius Junior costs more than our entire team. But it's just one of them things at the end of the day. That is why Champions League is going to be quite a difficult thing to accomplish. However, in terms of goals... It is quite a good quite a good thing. Although we have missed out on quite a few goals, we haven't in the sense of we're still winning games, obviously. We're still the best in the division for scoring goals. Esposito is still scoring 40 plus, which is great to see. 47, 22 from Duada. Polisane coming in with 21. Then there is a little bit of a drop-off. So ideally, I would look to try and bring in possibly another striker um, just to help us with the goals a little bit um, because there is a bit of a drop off past the 20 mark. Whereas before that, you know, there was, you know, it looked a little bit more appealing up there. But in terms of assists, we've got 23 also from Esposito, probably the best player in the team. I imagine by match rating, he should be because he's dropping a masterclass. But 
No, I think with the money we've been given, which is, by the way, 35 million. So very impressed with that. Um, obviously, that is because of the Champions League little cash injection. Um, when you get out of the groups, also getting to the semi-finals, obviously, it's quite a good accomplishment for this club. So we have got 35 million to spend. So let's get into the third transfer window and see exactly who we can bring in. So, guys, this might be like deja vu. Now, don't pay attention to this side here. I'm just simply showing you this just so you know how we got a little bit more money and who is obviously left for the club. Raman didn't have the best season. He couldn't really hack it up top and he wasn't happy. He wanted a new contract and I wasn't too interested in offering one because I couldn't guarantee he'd be first team because I had a striker in my head who I wanted to get. So we actually offloaded him to Spartak Moscow for £16 million, which in my opinion is actually quite a good deal for us. We then go and spend quite a little bit of, we spent a decent amount of money. We spent 33.5 million. So to be fair, we've still left the club with some money there because we actually had 35 million and we sold a player for 16. We're going to start off with Bard Dagley from Copenhagen. Obviously a player which I'm pretty sure we've all heard of. Um, He is a wonder kid and a player which a lot of people will look to sign in this coming year. And he cost us 10 million pounds. So quite a steal in my opinion. We then go over and we signed Palido for 4.8 million. We then go and sign Milan, another player you guys probably have heard of, um, in Adley for 7.7 .7 million, which again, in my opinion, is quite a good price. You can't really complain. We then go to Hoffenheim and we sign Jorginho Rutter for 12.2 million. And the last sign-in wasn't a planned sign-in, but was a sign-in that was on the free. And he looks very good. And that is going to be Brandon Williams. So in my opinion, we've strengthened what? We've strengthened the wing. We've strengthened also an attacker midfield role, striker, defence. We've pretty much strengthened everywhere on the pitch. So a very good transfer window. But these are going to be the players. So the first one is going to be Bardagli. Again, he is a player which you start with. He's not technically the best when you first get him. Obviously, in my opinion, his attributes are actually okay. But it's all about developing this guy, getting him game time, improving him. And in this team, I feel like he is going to be getting a lot of game time. Then go and we sign Polito. Again, a player which I've never signed before. It was really difficult to try and attract really good young centre-halves. So we went with this guy who, again, looks actually really good. 17 tackling on him, by the way. 16 determination, good composure. You know... There are some stats which I want a little bit more in. Um, possibly the strength only being 10. But pace is decent. Acceleration is decent. He's only 23 years of age. Three and a half star ability. A leading pro league player. And also has got the potential to become a star player. So very good in the terms of that. Also got the fairly determined personality. Which is always good to see. We then go over and we sign Adley. Looks very aggressive in the picture I must say. But this guy I've used in several rebuilds last year. And I'm a big fan of him. Um... Again, his stats don't really attributes. I always call them stats. They don't pop out, you know, really attract you massively. But he is a player that can grow 23 years of age. And I do think he can be a very good player in this division. I'm still sort of adapting to when I do rebuild to rebuild. That Obviously, some leagues are easier than others, obviously. So it's sort of like when you do a rebuild with in the Belgian league, um, there's a lot of comments wanting me to do Rangers, for example. You can sign players that, you know, might be average across in the Premier League or German League, Spanish League, but you get them in that relevant division that the Belgian League offers and they absolutely tear it apart. But this is a player who I think can even do it at the highest level, but he will definitely do it in this Belgian League. We then go and we sign Rutter. And this player here is again a player I have heard of, but I've never actually given him the chance to sign. And his attributes do look quite good. Finishing could do with a little bit of work, but he has got the ability to grow into that. He's only 22 years of age. And he, you know, value-wise, he's not too expensive at all either. He can also play on the wing. So for some reason, we've got injuries to all the options we do have. He can cover that position. But in my opinion, this guy needs to stay up front because that is his strongest position. We then go over to the last sign -in, which is going to be, to be honest, it was a sign -in which I had no intention of making. I didn't specifically go out to get a left back. I definitely wouldn't have specifically gone out and thought, yeah, we'll get Brandon Williams. But this guy's only 23 years of age. He's already a star pro league player, close to his full potential, which is fine. He's already a star player. Good tackling, pretty quick as well. Good determination, um, good bravery on him, perfectionist personality. Probably will get into the first team right off the bat. And on the free, you can't complain at all. So it is what it is when it comes to that. And we have gained probably one of the best left backs, if well, definitely actually the best left back this division has. 
And this is going to be how the team looks then. So we're going to have um, Combridge and goal, Murillo, Erikovic, Howardet, Williams, Dewara still maintaining that deep line playmaker role. We've got Vizcarin on the right-hand side, Gittens on the left, Adli, Rutter and Esposito. Now I am getting confident with this side. And I think that I, just because we got to the semi-finals last season, I don't know if we can do it again in the Champions League because the team's not fully there, in especially depth. When you have the Champions League, to the cup games, to the league games have got to play. We haven't got good enough depth. So we'll see how we do. But let's get into the next season and hopefully keep winning the Belgian title. Well then, guys, unfortunately, the Champions League didn't go as good for us this time. We did, you know, Bayer Leverkusen are a good team, but I do feel like we could have beaten them. We actually lost in the knockout playoff round. So not a good display in the Champions League, which, to be honest, I, I pretty much did call. Um, we also did manage to win, though, however. We won the Belgian League again, so that is three times on the bounce, I believe. And also the Belgian Super Cup against Club Bruges. It's going to be Esposito, who, by the way, what a player he has been. I think he scored 40 or above goals in two seasons. And this season he scored 51. So very good goals to game ratio. A fantastic striker. And he's definitely carrying that upper line. 132 goals scored and only 37 conceded. If we go and look at the statistics of the players, it's going to be Esposito with 51. It's going to be Rutter with 43. So that is more like the Fabio Silva replacement, actually contributing just as many, really, as Esposito. Very similar. Both got, well, it's going to be Esposito with 20 assists and Rutter with 19. Um, you're going to have Adley having quite a good season, 21 goals and 13 assists. 23 assists coming in from Vizcarin on the right-hand side. 14 and 15 coming in from Gittens and Erikovic, a centre-half. I imagine they must be flick-ons. <laughs> and 17 coming in from Brandon Williams. So overall, the new players we've brought in have done really well. If you look at um, especially Rutter, Adley, um, even Brandon Williams having himself quite a good match rating. Two goals, 17 assists. Obviously, you don't expect goals from him. Um, the assists are always nice, though. And yeah, overall, it could have been a better season, obviously. Going from the semi-finals of the Champions League to losing in the playoffs is a little bit, little bit of a downgrade. But I must that last season I think could have been a fluke. I'm going to be honest because the team's nowhere near ready yet to compete for the Champions League. And to be honest, I don't know if it will ever be ready inside of four to five seasons because it's not only the money that's the issue when you do it with a club like this, but it's also the fact of it's very hard to attract players. There was tons of free agents that I was trying to get. And the thing is, as soon as a Premier League club goes in for him or any other top five club, you stand no chance. Same as when you try and sign someone. If another club comes in, even if they offer less wage than what you're going to offer them, they always go to the bigger club, obviously, to match their ambitions. So it is difficult, but we're going to we're going to carry on. We're going to maintain, play a couple more seasons and see exactly where we can get. But next season, the budget has actually been quite generous because we have actually been given 39 0.9 million, so nearly 40 million pounds to spend. Now, as I said again, it looks great 40 million on the screen, but it doesn't mean you can go out and sign who you want because we still have the struggle of attracting the top, top players, the wonder kids, the, the, the all, the, all the elderly stars, or whatever you want to say. We, we just have a, a real big issue of attracting the star players. So we're going to get into the next transfer window and hopefully we can we can strengthen the team a little bit. Well, and that is what we've done. I do believe we have definitely strengthened. We turned to Feyenoord and we got a Giratuda for £27.5 million. We picked up Lotka from Dortmund for £1.4 million and Zabrani from PSG for £15.5 million. Now, I instantly wanted to strengthen the deep line playmaker role, and this guy is a sensational deep line playmaker, but I do have a feeling the assistant is going to be playing him at right back. So next window, we might have to sign another right back so this guy does guarantee to be played where I want him to be played. But this guy is absolutely sensational. He is 24, so obviously his growth is nearly tapped, but he could improve slightly. So, you know, you're not going to see significant growth out of him. He could improve slightly, but to be fair, he's fine as he is, in my opinion. He can play right back, he can play centre back, he can play in three positions. So he's sort of doing three roles in terms of he could be a backup player, he can go in midfield, he can also be a centre back. So he's going to help out a lot. We then go over to Lotka, and again, this is really to replace one of the keepers that did, I think he retired or we let go on the three, because at the end of the day, the, key, the keeper situation is far from perfect. We are now seeing a bit of a decline. This guy still really isn't good enough to be in the first team. 
but we just couldn't sign anyone guys um i tried to go and fill a font but he would not accept a contract um although he didn't move anywhere so we possibly could go in for him again um and i will keep you updated with that if we do manage to get him but we couldn't sign anyone really so this was the only option that i got scouted that i thought do you know what he looks okay he's going to be a good backup goalkeeper in a few years to come so we decided to pick up marcel Lotka. And then this guy, we all know this guy. I mean, sensational centre-back, 22 years of age, good tackling, reasonably quick as well, good balanced. Good balance, good balance, sorry. Good teamwork, and again, already a star Pro League player and also could improve slightly. And this is going to be how the team does line up. So it is going to be um, Cronbridge actually maintaining the goalkeeper position. It's going to be the new man at right-back, who I did want to be playing here because he did, he's like a four-star ability in this area, so it would be an upgrade. On Dewara. We've got Zabrani and Howardette as a centre backs, Brandon Williams, Gittens, Adley, Rutter, and Esposito. Now, I'm hoping this season we can have a little bit more progress in the Champions League, even if it is making it to the quarter final, the semi final, the final. Or, do you know what? If not winning it, <laughs> but that'll be ideal. But let's go and have a little look and see exactly what we can do. Well, it is an improvement, but it's not the best we've seen. We got to the quarterfinals where unfortunately we matched up against Giants Real Madrid and I did take us down. However, it is going to be a treble winning season. We won the Belgian Pro League, the Belgian Cup and the Super Cup. So, so far we've not actually lost a Belgian league at all. We've won every single one. And that was the, the goal to pretty much win three out of five. And we've already, you know, we've already gone above and beyond that. So we are currently, we've done the rebuild, but we are going to carry on. I just want to see what another season can offer us in the sense of can we actually manage to get to the champions league final can we win the champions league that's exactly what we want to be seeing again it is going to be 114 goals scored and 34 conceded so the stats for the league are actually ridiculously good um there are quite a few bookings so i will be going over how you can sort of tweak that if you wish to but what we're going to be looking at mainly here is the goals again, because who doesn't love some goals? It's going to be 51 goals coming out of Rutter, Esposito with 38 goals, 15 for Adley, Bardagli actually getting some game time, mainly as a substitute, 8 goals and 10 assists. We've got Vascaran sorry, coming in with 7 goals and 26 assists, so he's having a great time on the right-hand side. And there is a little bit of a drop-off in terms of the goals, but again, we're scoring enough to win the division and two Belgian Cups, so I'm not going to complain too much. But we are going to give ourselves one more season to sort of, although we completed the rebuild, I think we can possibly push on and get to the semis of the Champions League, if not the finals. I genuinely do feel like we can do it. I know we got to the semis once. I feel like we can get to the finals with one more window. And to do that, we haven't got as much money as what I thought, you know, we might be getting because they've been quite generous. But possibly now they're sort of thinking, well, hang on, we can't keep pumping money in. That could be the outcome. We have been given 28.9 million pounds so we're going to see what we can do with it and hopefully we can still attract some big players to push us over that line to the champions league final if not to win it well we've actually done quite good business here to be fair now again they sort of mixed up the pages so i'm going to be showing you a couple of pages this one obviously we know about these three we actually managed to pick up demario demario on the three who by the way i believe is a four-star ability center half he wasn't happy at his club obviously I guess they wanted to sell him. They couldn't. So we agreed a pre-contract and he actually accepted. He is on a fair bit of Wonga though, I must say. But again, a very good cent half to add to the collection we have now. We also managed to sign Emerson Royale on the free. Now, the reason why we've done this is to obviously sign a right back so that the player we initially signed for deep line playmaker, who is playing as a right back, can play where we want him to play. And Royale can step in to that start on 11. We do offload, I'm not even going to, I'll butcher this name, but we offloaded this player here for 8.7 million and we offloaded Duada, Duada to Verona for 13 million. So quite a bit of money coming in as well. We also sign Marcus Holmgren Pedersen from Feyenoord for 9 million and Alban Lafont finally from Freiburg for 13.2 million. I'm guessing because Lafont didn't get the move he wanted, he rejected us last season. This season, he was all up for it because he didn't obviously get the move he wanted. And finally, we have a goalkeeper who genuinely, I think, can actually compete at a Champions League level in this game. The first play is going to be this player here. And on the three, you can't really complain. Obviously, playing for some big clubs, Madrid, Atalanta, Juventus, um, Tassuolo, some really good clubs he's played for. And it's, you can't really go wrong. It's a free sign -in. You know, he's worth between 36 and 39 million. 
great tackling. He is a little bit on the decline right now, but he's still only 28 years of age. So you've got a few years in him. And I think it's probably one of the better free signers I've ever done in a rebuild. Good strength, um, not the quickest. Pace is actually quite good, to be fair. Good natural fitness, good jumping, good aggression, good anticipation, good bravery, good determination, good leadership, good work rate. Everything you want for a centre half he has. An elite driven centre back and also... Uh, yeah, sorry, I was going to say elite-driven, elite centre-back elite with a driven personality. I sort of combined them both there, that was weird. But at the end of the day, on the free, you can't really complain. We then go over, and this is going to be Emerson Royale, a player who typically I probably wouldn't go for, I'm going to be honest, but he's actually fairly decent on this game, in my opinion. Um, Quite balanced attributes, good acceleration, good pace, good stamina, good work rate, good tackling, and a player that actually was interested in joining. And I can't really complain. Um, Again... Not going to cost a lot to have at the club in terms of wage either. So, in my opinion, a good player to add to the team. Then go over and we sign this player because we needed a couple of right backs. And this guy, again, has the ability of also covering the left back. And also, kind of on the wing if you wanted him to, which he won't be doing for us. But played a ton of games for Feyenoord. That's pretty much where he's established himself as a player. He's a lead and pro league player, close to his full potential, but more than good enough for us. Very rapid on the ball and also quite good at tackling. So pretty much the perfect fullback. We then go over to the player we tried to sign last season and we couldn't. That is going to be Lafont, a player which, I've been, as I said, I tried to get even the season before last, and I just couldn't attract him. But this season, he was tempted. We managed to get him into the team, and he strengthens the team massively. And this is going to be the team then, guys, going into what is going to be the final season. It's going to be Lafont, it's going to be Pedersen at right back, Zabrani, Damaro, Williams, um, Dratuda, Vascarin on the right-hand side, Gittens, Adley, Rutter, and Esposito. Now, this team here, I think, is definition of a successful rebuild now you're not going to be you're, you were never going to see unless we won the champions league possibly you weren't going to see your sesco's your denny's your makoko's because they're not interested in coming to this division but in terms of players we've brought in i think we've done a really good job here we've brought in some really good players some younger players some good free signings as well because you have got to think you haven't got unlimited money with a team like this either and we're now going to play one more season, and that is going to be it. But hopefully, we can get to at least the finals of the Champions League. Well, unfortunately, guys, I just don't think the Champions League is going to happen. It's even worse for this one, I'm going to be honest. The round of 16 versus Celtic, it's not a good display in the Champions League at all. I genuinely think Celtic should be a team we should be easily getting through right now. Um, unless they have got an incredible team, which let's have a quick look. Um... Decent manager by the looks of it, but their team looks very beatable in my opinion. Schedule, how have they been doing? They've been losing to other teams. Um, lost to Salzburg, for example, would be a key one. Tactics, um, yeah, I, it's a team we should be beating. Not McTominay at centre-back. It's a team we definitely should be looking to beat, and unfortunately, we just couldn't get past them. We did do the treble, though. We won the Belgian League, the Belgian Cup, and the Super Cup. Esposito remaining the top goal scorer. I mean, this guy is turning into some player now. Let's have a look at him. Still only three and a half star, but goals to game is an absolute joke. Look at this. 194, 168 goals. Only valued at this as well. So, fair play to him because at the end of the day, I mean, them these type of stats you'd think would be a four-star minimum, but only still a three and a half. Um... It's going to be Gittens with most assists. This player didn't develop as much as what I would have liked him to, and he played every single season. Not a great return for goals. And to be honest, I mean, okay for assists, to be fair. But overall, didn't really develop into the player I thought he would have done. But nevertheless, he's still got the potential. That's the sad thing about it. But he just didn't really grow in a quick enough spell, really, to actually get us anywhere. Um, but overall, I am happy with how this rebuild has gone. If we go over to the tactics page now, let's look at the data hub. Team attacking, 3.22. Team defending, 0.7. So the stats are actually really good for the league. If we go to the tactics page quickly, um, here we go. So we can see the rollability we've sort of got, we've left him with three and a half star, three star, Two, three and a half a cent of the this defense is actually really good, I must say. Brandon Williams is a great defender. We've got the right back here, we've got Zabrani, Demario, Lafont. We've left him, we've actually left him with a really good team and also some very good players. Bardagli, a player which has grown a little bit, to be fair, into, into his own. But okay, he's actually playing a lot more now. In the first season we signed him, he didn't actually really get much game time at all. But um 
overall, we've left them with quite a good team in terms of even backup. So I would say this is pretty much a successful rebuild. We won every single Belgian title there, there was, and especially the league, we didn't lose at once. So the rebuild, the rebuild goal was actually cemented in, in stone. We've easily done that. But we are now going to break down this amazing tactic again. Full credit does go to the tactic creator. Before we do, though, please smash a like on this video and do subscribe. And please turn on notifications, guys. This way, you're going to get notified when I do a community post. This is where you guys can vote on what rebuild you see next. It's also a place where um, I also post, obviously, when I post a video, when I go live. And also, you're going to get notified when I upload and when I live stream. And if you guys want to stay in touch even more, you can find my social medias in the description. But to make it easier, uh, my Instagram and Twitter are both Josh Daily, but replace it's pretty much j-o-s-h-d-x-l-y so just replace the a from the daily with an x and you'll be golden but let's break down this tactic right now then so we played five seasons with it and overall i am happy with how it's been how it's gone i would like to add to it that i actually have tested this out briefly with a private save of mine and it does perform very well obviously with the elite teams as well i tested it with manchester united Again, I can already see the comments about you shot aren't our elite team, but I'm sort of three or four seasons into them. We've got a fantastic team and it absolutely wiped the division. I mean, it absolutely slaughtered. So, I mean, this tactic is a really good one. The thing I like about it most is the fact that these players do sort of drift in and they are pretty much a diamond sort of style. Now, let's kick things off then. We're going to clear this because it looks very clustered. We're going to get rid of that. So, we're going to start off with a positive mentality. In possession, you want fairly wide pass into space underlap left and right slightly shorter um higher tempo run at defense and low crosses in transition nothing when position has been lost counter distribute quickly distribute to the flanks and that is it out of possession you want a standard defensive line a mid block line of engagement much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution and stop crosses now one thing you might see is that you've probably seen a few tweaks here and there from each season. The tactic changed a little bit here and there. And that's a perfect example of what I say. When you download a tactic, you can't plug and play a tactic really anymore. You have to make your own adjustments to it. So there was a couple of positions I changed, not because it didn't work in the tactic, because my players are more comfortable playing that position. It's the same as I believe I changed the mentality and possibly something in possession. So it's up to you guys if you want to replicate exactly how I've got on this screen or you want to try and plug and play the default. But overall, this tactic worked really well. In terms of player roles, I'm going to start off with the goalkeeper, a sweeper keeper on defend, pass it shorter and take fewer risks. We've got a fullback at right back on attack, pass it shorter, shoot less often, cross more often and get further forwards. Two ball playing defenders, one on cover, pass it shorter, shoot less often, hold position, stay wider and take more risks. And next to him, a ball playing defender on defend, pass it shorter, shoot less often, stay wider, take more risks and hold position. And it's important they're both on sort of stay wider because the fullbacks are going to progress up the pitch. They are going to get involved and this means the centre backs will drift out and sort of cover them. At left back, we've got a wing back on attack, pass it shorter, shoot less often, run wide with the ball, cross from byline and get further forwards. In the middle, we've got a deep line playmaker on defend. Tackle harder, which is something you can look to take off if you're picking up too many bookends. It should possibly is the one thing about this tactic I would possibly tweak is to take a few plays off the tackle harder. Shoot less often, dribble less on hold position. On the left hand side, you've got an inverted winger on support. Take fewer risks, cross from deep, shoot less often, um, hold position, stay wider, tackle harder, dribble more, cut inside with the ball. Now, this stay wider is a funny one because I watched a few of the games in terms of the highlights. And they didn't really stay wider at all. Um, they were drifting a lot. Obviously, they are inverted, so you can expect that. But for me, I would recommend leaving it on because possibly if it wasn't on, they would be too narrow. Possibly having that on to sort of just help them stay a little bit wide. But in my opinion, the wingers were really good, so I wouldn't look to tweak anything. Just keep them as they are. On the right-hand side, we've got take fewer risks, cross from deep, shoot less often, hold position, stay wider, dribble more, and cut inside with the ball. Attacking midfielder, again, you could literally change this to any one of these. Advanced playmaker, shadow striker, any of them would work in my opinion. Attacking midfielder on attack, pass it shorter, move into channels, close down more, tackle harder and get further forwards. Two strikers, both advanced forwards on attack, take more risks, dribble more, close down more, tackle harder and move into channels. And on the right hand side, it's exactly the same. So 
a very good tactic there again full credit to the tactic creator link will be in the description below to the fm scout post but that is going to be andalex rebuilt guys as always if you guys have enjoyed be sure to leave a like on the video and do subscribe to the channel plus please do comment what rebuild you want to see next the way i well, the way i do it is i look at your comments i then put them in a community post and that is going to be the deciding factor now for example this week it was andalect or i believe Coventry, i believe it was it was a low league side the way that it works is andalect won so now next week coventry will go in with another team if coventry win i'll do a rebuild on them if they lose it'll go out of the rank it'll go out of the sort of poll for a little bit because obviously it's not very popular and that's how i sort of do it. i give each team two times a good opportunity to win um this week it is going to be manchester united and coventry which is going to be the battle off the sort of face off of who you want to see rebuilt so be sure to get your votes in for that but that is going to be it for me today guys and i will see you in the next one